Welcome back, everybody. Now, in our Docker series, which we, I mean, uploaded a video last week. So today we want to focus on installing Docker. All right. Now I'm going to walk you through the installation process. I mean, of course, we have different platforms by which you can actually run Docker on. You can run Docker on Windows, Linux, and on your Mac operating system. So in today's video, we want to focus on how do we install this Docker before we begin to talk about the usage of this particular platform? Is that okay? Now, this is the Docker website. Like you can see here, this is docker.com. Okay. And of course, you can go around. I mean, one of the places to also, you know, always look out for is the docs um, section because that is the documentation section that shows you how, you know, the application functions. I mean, if you have any questions or you're looking for clarity or right concerning any particular product, then you have to go to that documentation or right section. So I'm going to click here on docs and right here, you can see that it takes us to, I mean, different aspect of Docker. We can see Docker Compose, Docker Desktop, Docker Engine, Docker Extensions, a lot of other, all right, you know, options that we can actually see right here. Now, since today's video is focused on how we can install Docker, whether you want to install it on AWS, on your EC2 instance, whether you want to install it locally on your Windows machine or on your Mac machine, we need to go through, all right, that, okay, so that we can understand how Docker works on these different platforms. Now, I'm going to come here. Of course, we're going to talk about Docker Compose as we go on, but then there are two things that I want us to look at here. So there's the Docker Engine and there's the Docker Desktop. So if you look at what you have here, you have the Docker Engine and you have the Docker Desktop. Now, let's expand Docker Desktop. I mean, let's take a look at, you know, what Docker Desktop is. How is it different from Docker Engine? Is that okay? Now, Docker Desktop here says is a one-click install application for Mac, Linux, and Windows environment that lets you build, share, and run containerized and microservice application, which means you can have Docker Desktop on a Mac, on Linux, and on Windows environment. And from the word desktop, it tells you that it's actually the GUI version of Docker. Okay, and as you can see from here, it tells you, it says it provides a straightforward GUI that lets you manage your containers application and images directly from your machine. So the Docker desktop is the GUI version of Docker. And interestingly, it can work on Mac, Linux, and Windows. So it is not an application for just Windows or Mac users, Linux users, particularly those who are running the desktop version of Linux as well. Maybe you're using Ubuntu desktop or Fedora desktop. You can also install the Docker desktop as well. All right. Now let's take a look at what is included. So if I install the Docker desktop, I mean, what are the other things that I get? Okay. As part of that installation. Now, the first one is you have the Docker engine. So, which means when you install Docker desktop, the Docker engine is also installed alongside automatically. Okay. Now, the Docker client is not, I mean, it's not bundled with that. And then you can see other things that you also have. But of course, the Docker Scout is for scanning your container or your images, actually. Okay. I mean, that is part of the DevSecOps. So if you want to scan your images for vulnerabilities, you want to search your, you want to scan your base images. I mean, you just want to scan the base image, the files that you have copied into your base, you know, your images, everything that is within that image, right? You can use Docker Scout to basically do that. But of course, it tells us here that it, that comes with what? Additional subscriptions, which means it's not free. You have to pay for that. And then you can have your Docker Build, Docker Extension, Docker Compose, Kubernetes, Credential Helper, and a whole lot of other things. Okay. So once again, the Docker desktop comes with Docker Engine. It's the GUI version of Docker, and it works on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Okay. Now, Let's take a look at the installation process for Docker Desktop before we go to the Docker engine. So if you click on install, it definitely gives you the installation instruction for each of these platforms. So if you want to install Docker Desktop on Mac, if you want to install it on Windows, if you want to install it on Linux, right here we can see what is expected. Okay, the kind of platform that it expect, all right, the you know, compute requirements and things like that. So if I click on Mac, for Mac users, 
I can see here, it says Docker desktop for Mac with Apple Silicon, that's the CPU, and then for the Intel chip as well. So you can click on any of these and it will tell you what you need to have. So here for the RAM, it tells us that we need at least four gig of RAM. That is the minimum, okay? So you need, you need at least four gig of RAM. So that's the minimum, which means if you have a Mac laptop that is, you know, that comes with the Intel chip, and let's say you are running 8 gig, for example. Now, if Docker Desktop is saying the minimum you need is 4 gig, that means your 8 gig laptop may not be able to run Docker Desktop efficiently. Because before you install Docker Desktop, you already have some other applications that are running on that system. They are consuming memory as well. So you have to think about it before you go ahead. Because Docker Desktop is actually a, a, a software that needs, I mean, some form of memory space, I mean, CPU and all of that. So if you're using an 8 gig RAM system, I mean, you want to think about that before you put Docker Desktop on your machine. And then for the one with the Apple Silicon, that also requires at least eight, uh, four gig of RAM and, you know, some other options that you can see right here. Now let's look at Windows. So if you want to run Docker Desktop on Windows, what is the requirement? So you need to have the WSL2 backend and that can be either x86 or 64, Hyper-V backend and then WSL2 backend, which is those who are using the ARM uh, system architecture. All right. And then it can be Windows 11 64B, whether it is home or pro version. I mean, it really doesn't matter. And then you also need, I mean, for those who are using Windows 10 as well, you can also use it on Windows 10, but these are the recommendations that you can see here. Now, another thing that you need to pay attention to also is that your system must be of the type 64 bit processor and it must come with the second level address translation. So this particular thing is what you will check inside of your BIOS if your processor actually supports that. And then this, you also need 4 gig system, I mean, 4 gig RAM to also use it. And of course, a virtualization must be enabled in your BIOS. So you have to check your BIOS if you have virtualization um, enabled. I wish I could show you that, but of course, there's no way I can demonstrate that all right to you. But of course, your system will support virtualization. Okay, so when you meet all of this minimum requirement and then you look at your system compute resource, if you think your system your system has enough compute capacity in terms of CPU and RAM, then you might all right want to go ahead and install Docker Desktop. Okay, on your Windows machine. Now, the reason why Docker Desktop is the only way to have Docker running on your Windows is because the Docker engine cannot be installed directly on Windows because the Docker engine is more like a CLI tool that is useful or that can be installed on Ubuntu on Mac. Okay. But on Windows, you cannot have the Docker engine installed on a Windows machine. So the only way to make Docker available on Windows is by installing the Docker desktop. Is that okay? Now that we have looked at the requirement for Docker desktop on, for Windows and for Mac, of course, if you click on Linux, you will also see the requirement. So if you want to run Docker desktop on Linux, you must, of course, uh, on Linux runs uh, a virtual machine, Okay, you must have a virtual machine running on your Linux machine, and then these are the platform supported. So you can either be running the Ubuntu desktop version, Debian, Red Hat, or the Fedora desktop um, Linux uh, version. Okay, and then these are some of the general, all right, system requirement. So 64 bits, all right, you know, CPU, KVM virtualization support, Quemo, all right, and a lot of other things here. So these are the GUI, all right, the desktop environment that you must be running, Genome, KDE, or Mate desktop environment. So either of these, and of course, the minimum is always four gig of RAM, right? I mean, it's the minimum, okay? So you have to really, really think about it before you go ahead and, you know, install Docker on your, all right, machine. So that is for the Docker desktop. Now let's look at Docker engine. Now, obviously, if you look at Docker engine and you expand the install section, you won't find a Windows here, right? But of course, you will see Ubuntu, Debian, Red Hat, Fedora, Raspberry Pi, CentOS, SES, Binary, and, you know, all the other uh, ones that you have. So let's click on Ubuntu and let's 
take a look at the requirements as well now for the docker engine you really don't need as much requirement as you need for the docker desktop primarily because it is a cli tool it's not a gui tool now gui tools actually require a lot of computer resources compared to cli tools right so for the docker engine you really don't need you know that much of uh the ram i mean if you have a T2 micro, for example, on AWS, which comes with one gig of RAM and one virtual CPU, you can still install Docker Engine and you're able to run the Docker commands, build images and all of that, right? So you're still able to do all those things. So if you look at what you have, you will see that they are not really, you know, strict on the minimum RAM requirement here, right? We can't see anything like that to say, oh, this is the minimum RAM you must have, or this is the, this is the CPU that you must be running. But of course, it has to be 64 bit. I mean, that's normal, all right? But then you won't see anything like, I mean, the minimum number of RAM and all those kind, all right, of things. I mean, you just see the installation instruction straight away. Okay, so that tells you that even if you're running a T2 Micro on AWS, all right, you can still run Docker Engine on that T2 Micro and still remain under the free chain. So which means if you don't have a system that meets the requirement for Docker Desktop, I mean, you can go on AWS, spin up an EC2 instance. I mean, T2 Micro, you can leverage the T tier to still learn how to use Docker. Is that okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a T2 micro that we're going to be running Docker on. And of course, I'm going to be using my own system as well, which of course I have Docker desktop installed. So I'm going to be using the tool to basically help us understand Docker. The reason why I'm going to be using the Docker desktop is to show us some of the behind the scenes of what happened when you run some Docker commands, all right? Docker build, Docker, you know, create and all those kind of things, all right? I will be using my Docker desktop to show you what actually goes on behind the scene when you run, you know, some Docker, all right, commands. So let me show you what the Docker desktop um, looks like. It's my own Docker desktop, okay? So you can see the interface right here, okay? You can see the RAM information, you can see the CPU, the disk usage, and all of that, right? So you can see all of these things. So you can also see all the sections. So there's containers, there's images, there's volumes, there's build, there's Docker Scout, which is for image scanning, and there's extensions, okay? So we're going to be looking at all of these things. As we're running Docker commands, we're going to be taking a look at, you know, some of these um, you know, sections. I mean, when you create something using Docker, you want to come here to see what you have created, all right, virtually. When you build an image, you also want to come here to see the image you've built. I mean, you should be able to click on your image and, you know, just look at information, you know, the Docker file, all right, that actually helps to build the image. You want to see all the information. When you're running a container, you want to click on your container. For example, if I come here and I click on this particular container, all right, I can see some information about the container. I can come here to look at the container logs and things, all right, like that. I can inspect, all right, my container. I can check I mean, a number of things that I can actually check right here, okay? So that is one of the things we're going to be using the Docker desktop to do to help us solidify our understanding. Is that okay? All right. So now let's go over to AWS. Let's spin up um, a simple EC2 instance. I mean, for those who do not have a system that meets the, you know, the requirement for Docker desktop, you can also go on AWS if you have an account there. You can just leverage the free tier, the T2 Micro, and still, all right, go practice along whatever it is we're going to be doing together, all right, in this particular series. Is that okay? So I'm going to click on instances and I'm going to launch instances. Now, one of the things that I want us to do is to use um, the AC2 user data to bootstrap our instance with Docker, all right, you know, um, installation. So that by the time the EC2 instance launches, all right, and then we're logging into it, all we have to do is to log in and then be able to use Docker out of the box, right? We don't want to go and then start the installation process and all of that. So if you click on Ubuntu here, I mean, this is the installation steps. So you can as well copy all of these into a shell script and use that to install Docker. All right. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing. So now we have an EC2 instance. So we're going to call this EC2 instance Docker. And we're going to be using the Ubuntu version. So we can go here to look at the documentation. So these are everything, 
that we need to run. Of course, we can run this one by one, but then since we have talked about short scripting already, all right, uh, in this class, then I'll just go ahead and copy all of these and put it in a short script and execute, all right, my command once and for all, right? So I don't need to start copying everything one, one by one and all of that. So, but then what I have done is to basically, all right, put that into a short script. So here I have a short script okay that will help us i mean it just basically copying all of the things that you have there and then putting it into a short script and just running that on your ec2 instance as user data okay now here the only thing that i've added is that i've added my ubuntu user to the docker group so that we don't need to do sudo to run all right any docker commands our ubuntu user should also be privileged enough to run docker commands without having to you know do sudo docker this sudo docker that i mean we can just do docker from the ubuntu all right you know use a terminal is that okay and then we're restarting we're restarting the docker service as well so i'm going to copy all of these things that i have here all right go to my instance select ubuntu okay and then of course like i said we're going to be using t2 micro since we're using docker engine we don't have to have uh you know um four giga ram which is the minimum for the docker desktop we can actually go with uh t2 micro one one virtual cpu and one gig and we're still able to learn docker all right with that so scroll down um select your keeper all right edit your vpc and select the three tier vpc okay so choose the public one here so existing security group that's what we're going to go with so let's just go with default and I'm going to stick with GP2 and right here, I'm going to expand that. All right. And then paste the script here. And of course, I'm going to launch my instance. So what we have done is to basically just pass in the Docker installation as a user data script to bootstrap our instance so that by the time the instance becomes ready and we're logging into it, we're able to start running Docker commands all right so that is what we have done but of course this here is to just help those who do not have all right a system that can allow them install the docker desktop okay to practice their docker all right skills so you can leverage the ec2 instance the t2 micro that we have here but as but going forward i'm going to be using the docker desktop that i have on my system to basically practice the docker commands and to walk us through all right what we need to know about docker is that okay all right so this is initializing already so we just wait for these to for the status check to be two over two and then we would continue all right from there so thank you and i'll see you on the next one